Mastering the Art of Contemporary Art. Uh, I'm Sean Naftal, and this is Soren Hudel. I think I might have said that right. Uh, it's close. Hudel. Yes, right. it's close. Perfect. <laughs> um, and we're going to be talking to Soren about a process that he does with marble. Um, though I'm going to actually start off and ask you a question. Um, why do you wear an ALF costume? Uh, that, that'll pop up here on the screen in a few minutes, I think, of a gigantic uh, fake alien sitting at a business desk. Um, but it, it seems like a weird reference. I, obviously, there's like a, an Americana 1980s kind of vibe <laughs> going on with a lot of stuff here. But um, yeah, I'm just curious, like, why the ALF costume? Why the, like, the... This is a Cheers logo from the television Cheers, the Vegas sign, the Hollywood sign. The, I think that was one of the Twin Towers, right? It was. No, it's oh, actually the uh, Bank of America in uh, LA, which oh, okay. was the headquarters of uh, Denver Carrington from the TV series Dynasty. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So okay. The, yeah. So, so there's, there's uh, definitely like a 1980s television. There is thing going. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I do work a lot with the uh, with the TV from uh, from the eighties and and camp and, and yeah. kitsch. Um, like I I really like uh, to work with these TV series and films uh, that are so iconic, but also very uh, um, very nostalgic as well. Okay. So I like to work with this nostalgia through images of the past, you okay. can say. Uh, yeah. Because it's, I like it to be irrational and not uh, particularly uh, understandable. So okay. it would only, so some people would get it and some people would be totally excluded and some people wouldn't know who Elf is. Some, some of the younger people here wouldn't know who Elf is and uh, or Some Dynasty. Or, or Dynasty. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So, so, and I or like Cheers. Any of cheers. These things, uh, yeah. I, I, I think the inclusion is quite interesting to work with in art. Okay. So it's actually for a specific audience. Yeah, yeah. And some people wouldn't get it, and uh, and, uh, and and people would understand the whole nostalgia in in uh, in these things. Okay. So, that's, and you're that's picking the 1980s because it, it, it kind of me, resonates. It, it's you. It's, it's it's it because it's my nostalgia. Okay. I mean, it would be me. mine too. So that's yeah. yeah. Okay, so, that makes sense. And that's that's why I'm using that. So uh, okay. And, uh, and I, I I really find this whole because it also does have a camp side to it that it's yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so uh, it's so kitschy, and um, and that actually leads more over to the. The marble as well, because uh, the La Las Vegas. I love Las Vegas. I go to Las Vegas, hope one one time every year. Uh, I hope. Really? Yeah, that's I, I, amazing. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I really like it there, and yeah. um, it's. Uh, I like to gamble. I like to drink. It's it's always uh, it's, allowed it's in, like, in it's Vegas. It's like Disneyland and, for yeah, and for you. Um, but I also like the the whole aesthetics of Vegas because yeah. it's so cheesy. And uh, that's that's the thing that I'm working with in my my practice. That's obviously that uh, it does have this kind of cheesy uh, discotheque. Well, yeah, uh, I mean the Stardust, the Stardust, yeah, the Stardust sign Stardust. alone is is very much that like iconic, like old school Vegas, just like so cheesy, so kind of tacky and over the top, and it's got that crazy font and all the yeah. lights. It was an old uh, Vegas casino. Yeah. It was blown up in 2006. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, my father was there for that. He, oh, right. he went to go watch it get blown oh, okay. up. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, and that's why I'm actually also using the marble. I think the marble is really interesting to work with. I like to, to actually uh, have, have a hands-on uh, approach to my work, so I really like to, to experiment with uh, different materials, as you can see, uh, uh, photography, uh, marble, painting, um, MDF uh, yeah. and uh, so okay. on. And um, marble is quite interesting to work with. It's, yeah. an, it's a rather new thing. And uh, I like the, the aesthetics of it because it does have this sense of uh, art historical reference, of course, but yeah. also that it, it, it can have this, uh, uh, it can be very, um, what do you call that, exclusive? Uh, yeah. You can call it exclusive, yeah. And, uh, uh, but still, it's pretty tacky. Uh, as yeah. well. So it does have oh, this yeah. kind of a uh, uh, dual uh, side to it that it, it can be 
both a bit taggy, but also very exclusive. There, it, it, yeah. it's kind of like Hilton Hotel. They have a lot of marble. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, which is way over the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's that like so, revival of Greek whatever, yeah. Roman whatever. And my parents so. have a marble bathroom as well from the eighties, and it's yeah. sounds lovely. Have you started carving your parents' bathroom yet? Uh, no, but uh, I should, yeah, because should. it's really horrible. Yeah, see? I'm sure they'll <laughs> so, appreciate it. Yeah. So um, why don't we go so ahead sure. and get started, and uh, we'll do the Cheers logo, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you kind of give an example of how this, this piece, what, what's the title of this piece again? Um, it's actually Stardust, because it's Stardust. actually... It's, it's part it, of the it, larger it's installation. Of, it's a part of the larger installation. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you this little piece, which is kind of working like a work in progress okay. so just to give you an idea okay um, there is one thing about uh, marble it's it's very time-consuming yeah yeah so I can only show you the the, the theories about it uh, yeah we'll do just a little example and mm -hmm, um, definitely uh, so I'll let you kind of grab a few things and explain something and I'll be right back all right all right and I'll just wear the apron yeah if, if you, you can don't put mind. the apron on perfect so Put this on. It's really messy, as well. Um, but actually, um, some people will tell you that you should use chisels for marble, and you can. It's pretty easy to uh, use these, but it takes, takes forever. Takes forever, yeah. and uh, you're better off with a much more modern tool, a Dremel. Uh, this is not a Dremel because my Dremel broke down. It's pretty hard on the, on the Dremels, the uh, carving marble. So this is just my bag up from Sylvan. Uh, but it'll do the trick. Okay. Um, there are some other different things. You can use an angle grinder to, to cut it into shape. To do like the big kind of... Yeah, to the big uh, carving. And material. for instance, this groove here, I, I made that with, a, with an angle oh, grinder. Oh, so you just kind of came in to get as much material out yeah. as possible. Okay. Exactly. Um, so, um, and safety. Safety first, right? Safety first. So you've got ear protection because it's loud. So, sorry. And yeah. uh, you don't want to breathe the marble dust because you can get white lung. It's terrible, and um, you know you don't want to go blind. So no, but be, yeah. Before I go on, uh, the bits are something called uh, tungsten carbide bits, and you can get them in any uh, well assorted uh, um, uh, DIY store uh, or online. That's where I get them. Um, so these like. These are all kind of examples of that, right? Yeah, these are just the, for the for the for a larger instrument. I'll show you in a okay. little bit. And this one is for cutting regular sh uh, straight shapes. Well, just give you an idea of how to approach this. Okay. Um, if you can hear, it's pretty loud. Shouldn't be this loud. All right. It does have a level here, so you don't have to. Jeez, you can control control the speed. Speed. Yeah, you can control the speed. But actually, here you go. So you're just you're, you're kind of taking you're taking away as much material as you can. Instead of using like a file and, and the chisels, you're really kind of using this tool right. to dig away the material. And exactly. It's, it's a it's a subtractive process, so you're just really trying to get as much material taken exactly, away as possible. Exactly, exactly. Because you okay. can use the files, but it actually just takes so much longer. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a very lazy person, and I like it to Good. actually be, <laughs> yeah. go as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, well, it's nice to be able to see the process really fast and really kind of, I, I know that some of the stone workers that, that I've known over the years, that they've always complained about the fact that, you know, they don't, they like the slow meditative process, but they really want to see, they don't get to see their material. They don't get to see kind of whatever's being unleashed from the marble or whatever stone for months sometimes. Like, no. I, there's one artist that I've, I've known for a while and he'll work on a piece for like a year, year and a half before he can finally see almost an end result. And mm. even after then, he still has all the polishing to do. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. And the polishing process is very, very slow. Yeah. Um, so. This one is actually very, very handy. Uh, and this one, a little small bit, this is the one that can actually just uh, kind of like go straight. And that. 
I'm not sure I can move. Uh, <laughs> well, if you're doing it that way, you can see on the. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm going to get out of the way. So how long would a process like this take you, like to do this sort of, well, let's say this size piece, how long would something like this take? The actual cutting process would only take perhaps a day or, okay. or perhaps two days because you need to, uh, to polish and uh, refine the edges. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's say two days, but the whole polishing process is much more uh, yeah, uh, time consuming. Yeah, slow and laborious just to come in and do things. Yeah, exactly. So when Okay, so you've picked out, you say, I don't know, say you're doing the Vegas, the Welcome to Vegas sign, right? And mm -hmm. how, is this all done freehand? Or do you, do you trace it on? Or do you project it? Or how do you, how do you figure out how to get this image onto this stone or the cheer okay. sign onto the stone? I'm actually just printing it out uh, on paper and then I'm cutting it out. And, uh, yeah. And putting it on, like yeah. a stencil kind uh, like of. Like a stencil, right. yeah, oh, right. exactly. And so I'm, I'm just drawing it okay. on. Uh, because the surface is so rough, yeah. you can easily do, draw on it with a very hard pencil. OK. And then you can just. Uh, just kind of go. work around with the yeah. pencil, and, and you'll, get, you'll get the form. Exactly. OK. Uh, getting it very straight is not so easy. So you will see there are some uh, imperfections yeah. here and there, but it, it, it's well, it's it is the nice thing having the imperfections, right? It kind of mm. shows, well, one, it shows that a human hand did it. Yeah. But it also shows that there's a bit of speed. Because I think normally in stone, you don't get a lot of imperfections when you're like really, no. like the slow chisel. But there's something kind of, there's something incredibly contemporary about making it with like Dremels and die yeah. grinders and, and angle grinders and these sorts of materials and really kind of going like just going in and like <laughs> really kind of devouring the stone as fast as you can yeah. to try to get this image, which I think really kind of talks back to this process that you were saying of like working in the 1980s, like these shows were really, you know, they had big staffs and they were really like churned out quick. Yeah, like yeah, They exactly. found a formula and they just kept going. <laughs> they so, did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but true, but again, I think it's also yeah. a matter of uh, t uh, how you how your head is. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> because um, for me, it's important just to to enjoy it, and I wouldn't enjoy it if it's just so too slow. Yeah. So okay. um, so that's kind of like that. Okay. Uh, um, see, the the thing is, the the hardest thing is actually to get the marble because it's actually quite hard to get here in in Denmark. So. Oh really? So okay. This is a piece I, I took home from Greece. It's not from Acropolis, it's just from the base of the Acropolis. So, <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, this is uh, an old tabletop. So, okay. uh, so that's, that's how you, you can find it uh, everywhere. So it, it is accessible, but it's perhaps not as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, ex, as accessible, accessible yeah. uh, as big pieces. So, okay. Uh, but um, you, you are able to find, I guess you wouldn't really have to work with marble. You could work with a couple of different types of stone. I would imagine that there are other stones. Granite, that, yeah. yeah, but... Or like I, soapstone, I, maybe? Yeah, like soapstone, but it's much more soft. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and I don't, I'm not really keen on working with granite. It's much harder to work in. No, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's, I don't like it. Yeah. But I <laughs> so, figure, like, if somebody's trying to do this at home, they could, if they can't find marble, there are other options. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Soapstone yeah. would be my uh, yeah. advice to... Because that you could actually just, you could bang out a piece really fast in soapstone. Oh, yeah, stuff, definitely. It really is almost like soap. Yeah, For exactly. that matter, you could use soap. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. So, um, okay. but you can, I mean, you could do uh, all uh, kinds of stones, but it would uh, involve some other, uh, other tools. tools. Yeah. yeah, you can't use these you have to have some other stuff. And I'm not really sure what they yeah. are. Okay. So, uh, so you could always ask at a shop or whatever. And yeah, I'm sure you definitely. You Google different types of materials and different yeah. types of things. Sure. Okay, so um, once, you, once you've started cutting and grinding, um, what's the next step in this? You've, you were talking about sanding and polishing. Yeah. So uh, well, I'm, I'm, let me show you oh, another. Said, yeah. the, the, there's another one uh, here. It's right. kind of like a... A large Dremel, but that one can really do some grinding in a in a rush. 
Um, here we go. Oh, it's, it's acting up again. <laughs> Ah, uh, tools. Yeah, tools always. The beauty of tools. <laughs> and this can also be, you can buy these at shops, right? Like uh, n these are not really that easy to find. Okay. So, um, so it's called a die grinder. So okay. you would probably buy it online. Okay. So, uh, I bought it online. Uh, it's called a Lies Lieber in Danish. Okay. I won't a straight that. grinder. A straight grinder? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, and these are really, really handy for, for. Um, and right now you're just, it takes two tools to tighten down. Yeah, the, that's. Tighten it down. I, maybe I should safety. have bought a little bit more expensive tool. Well, no, yeah. I think, you know, that's, that, that is, that's probably the most common. Yeah. Common way. I know in the States that mine, my die grinder is the same way. Oh, like right, it takes okay. two different wrenches and you have to go opposite directions. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so, but this, this one goes, uh, here and uh, it takes off a lot of the the surface, but it's actually also good for uh, for for when you need to start the the polishing process. So you can actually oh, okay. just give it a little bit. Sand it down a little bit. Uh, just take off that first layer. Exactly. Really kind of get it off. But oh, that's amazing, actually. The E really kind of came out while you were doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. So it can actually smoothen the surface much more. OK. So uh, and for, for the polishing process, it's, it's, it takes a lot of time. Uh, that's that's the. I've tried to uh, <laughs> uh, use machines and uh, with um, uh, sanders and yeah. stuff, and it doesn't really work. Okay. So you, you, it's it's a it's a process you need to do by hand. Okay. Um, and that's. I'm not going to stand here for a day. No, no. no. So I think if we can just this kind is. Of <laughs> uh, so you've I got mean, these. This is all the wet. The wet, yeah, dry sandpaper. The, there's actually, yeah, I start up with grade 100 and then I go up to grade 240 and all the way up to grade uh, 1200. Okay. And uh, the thing is, this one took me about a day to, to uh, polish. Okay. And to be honest, I could have used perhaps a little bit more time on that yeah. uh, if I wanted it to be completely. Uh, uh, what is shiny? Okay. Uh, so that's that's the whole process. The whole process of getting it shiny is actually the posi polishing the process. Polishing. Okay. And it it works like you you start off with a grid. Well, you can start with grid sixty, if you just want to really take off a lot of uh, the surface and the uh, uh, irregularities here, and then okay. just you know go on with it. And uh, you can see actually a lot of. There's a lot of uh, marble coming off yeah. just with the grid 100. Well, that's kind of amazing. Yeah, it really smooths out the surface just doing that. Exactly. And it brings out the little kind of veins. Mm -hmm. You can start seeing the, the texture of the marble. Yes. Okay. This, is, this is a different type of marble than this one. Yeah. I think this is uh, an Italian marble and this is uh, evidently a Greek, Greek marble. marble. Yeah. Uh, and there is, of course, it should be the Carrara mar marble, course, which is yeah. the... The which most is the, expensive. Yeah. and the, the coolest and the yeah, most. I went to a uh, marble course in Italy in, okay. in Carrara, and that was pretty fun. That's yeah. how I went to do it. Uh, so, uh, and uh, so, so actually, the whole process of this is just sanding it down, sanding it down. And when you, when you reach grade six hundred, you start putting water on it, so 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 you, do, so you don't get the the dust uh, to stick. On the paper. Okay, and so and that kind of polishes it as instead of just sanding, it really kind of polishes the surface. Yeah, and uses both the material of the stone and of the of the paper to, to work the surface. Mm, no, actually, you put a you can do that, but yeah. that, that's really time consuming. You okay. can use oxalic acid to get the the shiny surface. That's what I've done here. Okay, 
So what you do when you when it's really really smooth and you've done all the sanding and all yeah. the holes, it's it, this would take a day as, at least. To, yeah. You know, from nine till six to actually get that the perfect okay. smooth surface. Um, you would uh, you would make this wet. Uh, put on some uh, oxalic acid with your remember to wear We're, protect, yeah. protection. We're not going to do that now yeah. because it's pretty dangerous. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah. So um, when you put that on, you just uh, rub it into the surface okay. a lot. You just use some, uh, some uh, uh, what do you call that, um, cotton uh, okay. uh, fabric okay. to just really get it into the, and you work up with it for 10 minutes. Then you let it sit for 10 minutes and then you can rinse it off. Okay. And then if it's not really perfect, you can just uh, start the process over again. Okay. And, uh, with the oxalic acid. The problem with the oxalic acid is that it will uh, uh, make the, the surface a bit smooth, so the sharp edges will become a little bit smoother. Oh. Because okay. it's well, actually uh, it's actually eating the marble, so it's 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 removing all the small grooves in the marble that okay. you've done with the, with so the sandpaper. That kind of makes it easier for these inside areas with the with the letters. Some of that probably smoothed out with the oxalic yeah, yeah, acid. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I chose these these ones to be not smooth. So this was smooth uh, from the beginning, and then I actually uh, oh, what back sanded it. it. Yeah, and oh, okay. sanded it a bit so it had a different textures. Just take the the shine off. Yeah. A little. Oh, okay. Cool. So, uh, awesome. But I, I have to say, it's it's much easier than I thought it would be to yeah. make a uh, marble. Uh, I so mean, the tools help a lot. I think the it, tools it help a lot. And it probably makes it a lot more fun because you get to see that, that yeah. process kind of unfold in front of you, as opposed to that long kind of. I think some artists really do like that snappy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that way. I like the snappy. Like, let's yeah. see it. I want to see at least part of it done yeah, really exactly. fast. So yeah. cool. Okay. So. Uh, well, cool. I think, fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I think that was it. It was cool. pretty easy to go. Yeah, yeah, it sounds fantastic. I would <laughs> encourage all of you to try to track down a piece of marble. Apparently it's quite hard. Mm -hmm. uh, or like we were saying, soapstone, which I think you could probably get it. I, I yeah, mean, here hobby sure shops. Hobby shops could yeah. have it. Um, I'm sure that there are some other stones, but again, you'd have to look it up online um, of what material. But uh, Soren, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It's really nice talking to you. <laughs> and. Um, I do love the, the kitschiness of everything, um, including kitchen, the kitchen. hat. So um, thanks again. And, um,